Sony finally releasing a patch to get some updates to the PlayStation 5 system, I've taken a deep dive into looking at just what they offer. Hopefully you've seen the one where I covered the hard drive, the copied speeds, and just where we are in terms of using an external drive to copy our PS5 titles. This one will dig more into the image quality options, the additional benefits there for 120 FPS players, and other areas I'll dive into, including that HDR shift. The next benefit or additional option in the menu is they've now added 120 FPS mode in the output choices. You've now got off, which is what it obviously would have defaulted to, or automatic. Now, prior to this update, if you didn't have a HDMI 2.1 device, or the cable didn't support it, so your bandwidth limited, then you wouldn't get an output. It could flick off, and therefore you'd have to go in and manually set it to 1080p. Now, it automatically changes the resolution, so long as they're both set to automatic, and it will push it down to 1080p if it has to, to give you 120 FPS output. And obviously, this is just less cumbersome in terms of what it used to be like when you had a 120 FPS screen but it didn't have HDMI 2.1. You have to go and flick it in the settings manually, or in my case, with the capture card now that's removed so that's a real benefit because it means more people can play 120 fps titles now on a tv that supports it. a lot of 4k screens support 1080 1440 120 fps they don't support 120 fps at 4k i look i've got a, a couple that do support it one that doesn't so it means i can have that choice between the two but if you don't have a screen that does it or you do have a 1080p monitor that supports 120 fps with this new option you can now hook that up and use that as your default monitor the biggest benefit is where your screen didn't support these kind of 4K 120 modes. You don't have to play around with the game settings and menu settings like you did. So things like Call of Duty, Cold War, the 120 FPS mode wouldn't work. You had to play around with it, go into the settings, go out and turn it on in the menu system for performance, then go back to the game, force that 120 FPS mode and restart it. So all that kind of clunkiness has gone away. Uh, Dirt also had a similar issue and some other titles did that as well. So generally, not every game had this problem that has 120 FPS mode, but it just makes the whole thing a lot more intuitive and hopefully means it will be more compatible with a wider selection of screens now the biggest benefit here i think is going back in and adding 1440p as an option because obviously a lot of screens that are 4k can support 1440p outputs the xbox one x had it already and so did the xbox one s in fact um, and it's a good benefit there by turning that on as a default option and running 1440p 60 or 1440p 120 fps so this is a step forward, but it would be beneficial to add in 1440p support when they do other updates such as VRR. Now, one of the reasons I think VRR and these other changes are slow in coming compared to other console manufacturers like Xbox is because I suspect they'll be doing something very similar that they did with the PS4. Which, simply put, they don't use the internal HDMI encoder. Instead, the APU is connected to a DP port, a display port, and then that uses an external HDMI encoder, basically a bridge that it connects to before it goes to the output connection that you plug into the back of your TV. Uh, basically, it's a man in the middle. And that process enabled them to retrofit HDR to the PS4, which they couldn't do for the Xbox One because that used a standard connection. So some of these choices, you can see where they delay things out. And this is why uh, Xbox have got that up and running using the internal APU, the HDMI encoder, and therefore they can latch onto those abilities that the GPU gives them. Whereas Sony, on the other hand, have obviously made their choices unbeknownst to us, but that's their decision. So therefore they've got these options, some of them beneficial because they can do things like that, that HDR stuff that I mentioned. But it means they've got to work on that in between that bridge solution to make it work so it's not simple for them because of the decisions they've made on their design now briefly what is variable rate refresh vrr so effectively games are usually driven they are driven by the output so the monitor dictates what the game refreshes at the game doesn't care that an engine can render at any arbitrary rate it doesn't need to be 60 fps 50 fps 30 fps 20 it can render anything and, and back in the day it used to you get different variations you know things like doom for example run at 70 hertz so the current norm is that's driven by the display it's the beat of the drum of the tv you're plugged it into your pc or your console whereas vrr does it the other way around so the gpu the console the pc tells the screen when it wants to flip so it says here's a frame at eight milliseconds so that's 60 fps here's a frame at 33 so that's 30 fps here's a frame at 17.4 milliseconds and there it can flip at that point, present the new frame, and it stops Judah. Predominantly, it's about stopping tearing, so it reduces the tearing on the screen. But realistically, the benefit here comes from 120 FPS titles, more than 60 in my opinion, because um, I'm not saying that you don't get benefit from them, but with a game that's like you know Devil May Cry 5 or Neo 2 or Call of Duty, where it can dip down to the low 90s at certain points and then go back up to 120, 
you can feel that at certain times. Certainly, you can feel it in the controls, um, but you can see it on screen as it moves around, specifically on lateral movement. All that can be reduced significantly with VRR using this option. But again, it brings me back to the point at the start, which is about the bandwidth option. Uh, currently, um, screens will take you know VRR up to 120 FPS at 4K. But if you've got a current screen that only accepts 1080 at 120, but it does support VRR or G-Sync, or it's compatible with this, this technology in terms of the communication route, then you can plug this in and use it and benefit from titles. And it, it will probably mean that many more games will use 120 FPS because your baseline then becomes, run it at 120, but you can let it drop to as low as 85-ish, and people won't really notice it if they've got a relevant screen. And again, these kind of boosts are welcome, but it'd be good to see that addition added in. There are some things, some caveats there. So again, like most things, the standards aren't really there to really you know pin that out. Some TV sets don't work as well, so OLEDs are not as good as LCDs because of the way they display the screen, and you can end up with slightly greyer um, colour tones and blacks when you play it on an OLED screen without VRR than you do without. But I'm not going to talk about those. Go and check out my CRT video to understand the difference between those screen types. But generally... It will be good to see VRR added in at a later date, and it's good that Sony are working towards adding these things in, but sometimes you can see why things aren't there from the start, because some of the wider decisions they make actually impede them in long-term delivery, so they have to take their time and get these things developed after launch, which is obviously where we are. Now also to be clear, just because I'm saying 1440p is a game resolution doesn't mean that affects the output, they're, they're not the same. So a game can render any resolution and output at any other resolution. It can render in 4K and output at 1080p, it can render at 1080p and output at 4K as upscale and downscale. So this doesn't affect the game's rendering rate, you'll get that upscale or downscale depending on the screen you plug it into, but it does benefit you if you can plug it into a 1440p 120fps mode and therefore get that output rather than getting a 1080p or a 4k output just for clarity now the next big update comes from the hdr the on when supported option in the menu now high dynamic range i've covered before so you can go and check out my videos linked below and on screen back in 2016 in fact when i covered this so hdr is obviously a big big thing now and it's standard on a lot of 4k screens but it is something that's still not as a, as a base standard so all the kind of noise and issues around it always arise now technically what the PS5 was doing, or still does, is it takes an SDR, so a standard range TV output, and it shifts it into a container. So it tone maps it back to HDR output. Now, any time you're playing around with tone mapping and color grading and all this kind of stuff, you can end up shifting the look. And what it effectively means is you don't get the same level of nit brightness and image output that you would get if it was a genuine HDR output being generated by the game natively. So ironically games do hdr and then they tone map it down to sdr even when they're not hdr and then they go back to hdr so what it creates is almost way back when i covered in my how to set your tv for games and that's around it shifts the color gamut and the contrast so you end up with either crushed blacks or bleached whites and that is what the image looks like so you can see here example using crisis it ends up looking a little bit milky and you lose that detail in the scene a lot of the darkness the contrast in the blacks that you need to to really bring out the best in hdr and the bright tones they're lost now you can fix it, obviously you've got to play around with your TV, but it means if you're going from an SDR to a HDR in the same container, it means you could end up with an image that is either crushed or grey and washed out, because this one input doesn't work on your TV, and you have to adjust the setting for the HDR image and the SDR to HDR image. So the best thing to do still is to turn it off if you don't have a HDR screen, obviously, because you don't have a HDR screen, it won't be there. But if you have got a HDR screen, um, it only really works when the game doesn't actually have HDR. So if it's on when supported and it has HDR but HDR is turned off in the game, it still comes through as this tone map shift back and you still get the same issues. Again, you can see it on the example. So Batman Arkham Knight is a totally non-HD title. It benefit massively from it because of its colour tones. You can see how soft and milky it looks, how the blacks are washed out and all grey. And it loses that contrast and the brightness and the colour tone gets changed. You can see it on the example here. Now you can fix this, obviously I'm emulating what you do on your TV, but here you see I can, I've colour shifted it a little, I've changed the contrast, I've shifted the colour warmth over a little bit to the blues rather than the greens, which the game standardly does in its toe mapping, and you can see it gives a, a brighter, more vibrant image. This is exactly the same output that's been converted using the PS5 output here, I've corrected it, I've not re-rendered it and changed it out, this is the exact same footage that I've just played around with the settings. So 
none of this broke the image. You have to change the TV to adapt to the image that's coming out, and you can still do that. But what the on when supported does is when the game isn't a HDR title and is standard SDR, it outputs SDR to your screen, so your TV doesn't flick to HDR mode, it stays in SDR mode. And that means you get the best image, as you can see here. If the game is HDR, such as Crisis, and you still turn it off in the menu, it will still do the tone mapping back. So it hasn't fully fixed it. It would be good if the game was able to output to the display or to the operating system to natively tell the operating system, I'm not outputting this game in HDR, therefore still do the same as if it was an SDR map. So it's a better option because you get all, all these older titles that now fix it, but it doesn't fix it where the game is not turned on by HDR by mistake. And this might happen because you've turned it off in the menu by mistake or you've forgotten then you go back to the game and therefore you're playing an SDR title in a HDR output container and you're getting this image that I'm showing you now, these issues that I'm showing you now and then you play around with your TV settings and then you go back to a HDR title and it works it just, again, it's, it's that cumbersome element of having to play around with your TV on a per title basis now obviously the intention here was great HDR is on, everything gets tone mapped to HDR and it works, but it doesn't always work because of what I'm saying. Some of those tone, tonal maps, the shift, and obviously even the chroma subsampling settings that you can change as well, all of that can have an effect. So on when supported is the right option, but if you do have a title that you don't like the HDR in it and therefore you turn it off, make sure you go and turn HDR off in the menu. And this brings us to the point of configuring HDR. So in the menu system, you get this option on the PlayStation 4, the PS4, and again on the Xbox as well. It's very important that you set HDR right on screen. Now, what you see here is not, is not exactly as you're going to see on your screen. It's all relevant to your screen. But what's really important, some people do this wrong. I've, I've seen this before. So what you need to do is you don't need to set the brightness setting here so you can't see it. You set it one, maybe two rungs down from that. So make it disappear and then notch it back one level and so you can just about see that that brightness level is gone so you can just see the inner pattern and one notch up and you lose visibility of it um, sometimes it's better to go two down but it all depends on your tv setting but definitely one at the very bare minimum and the same for the darkness do the same thing so set it it's completely disappeared and then notch it back up and from this the trick is you don't need to play around with the settings too much when you go into a game, obviously unless it's got a real heavy gamma curve, but you should then be able to go into a game like Resident Evil here and not play around with the settings of the left icon and the right icon and the right balance, or if it's HDR screen, then you get the colour band in between. This is really a calibration setting so that you can validate that it's right on screen. So make sure you spend the time getting this right, and then when you do go into a game and play it, if the screen looks off and the image looks off, don't first play around with the screen. Go back and check you haven't got HDR on by default and the game's output as SDR. This is what I'm saying. So most of the time, once you've set it correctly, the ranges should be configurable within the game itself and you should only need to change the game settings and not touch your TV or your operating system. So just spend that time getting that right and then test a couple of games when it's set to HDR and then you should have the best quality image output. And obviously I'll have a lot more to talk about this on, on this particular subject very, very soon with modern HDR screens. And that pretty much wraps up the updates that this option adds. What it would be good to see now is Sony push forward on the next set of updates. So and the, the internal NVMe drive, that would be good to get that out this year because that will really benefit getting another drive in your, in your system and be able to play that more often and certainly seeing what those times are like compared to the internal system and certainly where the baseline is on what speed they expect. But I'm, I'm assuming around 7 gigabytes per second is what they're going to baseline this at and not accept any slower than that. And then those other additional options of the 1440p output, VRR, when they get around to it. And obviously, all of these updates are just like GPU updates. They add and enhance performance levels in the system. So you can actually get performance on certain games because you've essentially got a new GPU driver or a, a motherboard driver to improve performance. And there's some other areas which I'll probably cover in a future video. But for now, I think that's just about enough. And if you do like this or part one or anything else that I put together, remember, I am a single man. I'm a one-man band doing this on my own, largely self-funded, apart from the very supportive people that support me on Patreon, which I really appreciate. And you can join them by helping on Patreon and give me a few dollars or pence if you can afford it. That really does help, especially videos like this which don't get the views that probably will make any money at all. And the few pounds and pence I made from YouTube and I'm not getting claimed isn't a great deal of money. So a lot of this is for the passion of doing the subject matter rather than making any kind of money out of it. So please share, please like, please comment and all that good stuff. And obviously subscribe because that's really, really important because it helps my reach in the industry. But for now, I'm out and I'll catch you on the next one. Who are you? I'm Rivet. Let's go for a ride. Wait, I have to find my friend.